Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Dr. Haifa Mamar. I am the Executive Director of Emerging Technologies here at Fulcera University. And today, we are streaming live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And we are actually here at the Fortress at Fulcera University. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Um, so, this week, here at uh, Full Sail University, we will be hosting the Central Florida Immersive Tech Summit for its second year. Uh, it's a, a two-day event, and we will be talking more about it uh, later on, on why we are hosting this event, why is this event important for our community, what kind of things you should expect at this event. And did I mention that this event is open to the public and it's free? Well. It is, so it's really a matter of you just showing up uh, to the event and, and enjoying and learning more about all these tech industry uh, leaders that are coming to share their insights uh, and uh, the latest advancements uh, in, uh, the, with the community. So uh, today we have uh, the trailblazers in tech. <laughs> Uh, I have a panel of uh, women leaders who are uh, revolutionizing the uh, virtual reality and augmented reality industry here in Central Florida. Uh, and I'm really happy to have these women with me today on the panel because, uh, I mean, not only they are part of the Central Florida Immersive Tech Summit, and they will be talking about their uh, contribution and participation in the event, but they are also, when I say the leaders in the industry here in Central Florida, each one of them, you will hear more about them and you will get to know them uh, in the next hour where you will be inspired to know everything they are doing in the industry nowadays. So, uh, we're going to start with you, Karis. Uh, Karis Baker, she is, I'm proud to say, we used to work together here at Full Sail University. She is a grad of Full Sail. She has been doing amazing things here uh, in the community. Uh, welcome again, uh, Karis. And she is a Hall of Famer. She was inducted last year here at Full Sail University. So, Thank you. Uh, Karis, can you uh, talk about your journey? Where did you start? Absolutely. How did you get to where you are today? And talk more about what is your current role right now in the company you're working at, Unity. And of course, you have your own company as well. <laughs> so I mean, like you're not busy at all, but I'm yes. I'm not busy at all. <laughs> um, uh, so I, my, my name is Karis Baker. Um, I'm a senior technical artist for Unity Technologies. And when I graduated Full Sail Game Art in 2013, there wasn't a, a role I could have aspired to to be an immersive technology developer. You know, that's not something that we had. Um, now, the, the technology is not new. It's just that the, these kinds of roles are evolving, right? So I just continued to apply my art over my, my career to things that I felt mattered. If the project that was brought to me I, I felt like it made an impact on the real world. You know, I said, yes, that's what I wanted to do. And I found myself uh, in virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, whether it was, you know, um, structural engineering or artificial intelligence or manufacturing or training. I, I've, I've done a little bit of everything at this point, I'm proud to say, but I, um, I'm also very passionate about games and I am working on a arcade machine um, with Astro Crow Games uh, as the art director and game artist. And it is now a commercial product and going into mass production. Um, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. It's really exciting. So um, I just got back from Midwest Gaming Classic in Wisconsin this morning at 6 a.m. And um, there were so many exciting new products on the floor, immersive experiences I got to try. So being a part of that community of, of brand new immersive experiences for entertainment is another exciting part of what I do. Well, thank you for being here today. I really, uh, I am grateful uh, for your time, but also, I mean, knowing that you've been driving since yesterday and to now, like, just come after 24 hours of dry, driving here to come and find you here to share your expertise with us. Uh, thank you for that. Wouldn't have missed it. <laughs> um, Ariane, 
Hey, my friend. Hello, friend. <laughs> so, um, hey, and do you want to, uh, can you please um, introduce yourself and talk more about your journey? Yeah. Here, yes. I mean, it started down south, now you're here, <laughs> yes. everything you do. Well, thank you, Haifa, my summit sister. <laughs> um, you know, my journey is kind of interesting and unique. Um, I, I actually started my career uh, in education, in working in colleges or for-profit um, higher education institutions that tra uh, trained in everything from nursing to electro electronic technicians to uh, graphic design and developers. And um, Ariane, can you hold it closer? Oh, please? sure. Thank you so much. And developers. And I realized um, that I had this passion when I was a younger girl, way back when, uh, for the Internet of Things. And some of you may be familiar with that, right? Because we're kind of living that life now. This is before that. And so I had a scientist father who was in that space when there was really not many people. And so when I was you know, 12 years old, to see my dad working on these things and sharing the ideas of what we would see in the future and what he was working on, I was really inspired. My path took me in a different direction, but this last few years, I actually took a position at Unity Technologies on the government aerospace and defense team. Um, working with organizations that were utilizing the 3D game, uh, real-time 3D engine uh, to solve the challenges of the world, right, in a variety of capacities. And I was really inspired by this immersive technology and got involved in our community and the Virtual Reality Augmented Reality Association here in Central Florida and the global organization. And I found a passion, just like maybe some of you have found, and it took me really far and really fast. And um, there's no looking back, and so now I am the Director of Global Ambassadors at the VRARA, which is a global organization. Some of you may be familiar, uh, but it's the Virtual Reality Augmented Reality Association, uh, and it's uh, an, a collaboration or collective of companies, education, um, universities, uh, sometimes even city governments involved, um, that basically uh, network and connect everybody on what in innovative technologies are being created and so, uh, support and resources and to really highlight what's happening in the community. And so it's a really important space. They don't set the standards, but they do um, get to highlight what's happening in the space. And so I found a big passion for that. And um, yeah, and so uh, I'm now uh, the conference chair for the Immerse Central Florida Immersive Technology Summit that's happening later this week, some of you may be aware. Um, that's going to highlight what's happening here. And so I've been working really hard with Dr. Mamar and the rest of our, our crew here at Full Sail to bring that to you guys. So I hopefully will see you guys there. Thank you, Ariane. And we're looking forward to the event um, uh, later this week. So, Phoebe, my friend. Hello. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you again uh, on another episode of Tech Tuesday. Uh, Thank you. And, um, well, today we're talking about a completely different thing, but it's kind of related to your word. Um, Phoebe, I mean, everyone here at Fulcell knows you, but I want you to introduce yourself again, talk about what you do, what you like. Sure. Uh, well, hi, I'm Phoebe Elefante. I'm the program director for the games and interactive technology degrees here at Full Sail. Um, I also had a circuitous journey into immersive technologies. Um, originally, my background was in political science and economics, <laughs> which is actually an excellent background if you want to be a systems designer <laughs> for games. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, uh, I was fascinated um, actually by virtual world games, um, this is decades ago, before they called it the metaverse. Um, and so I got really fascinated by that and wanted to study um, economies inside of virtual worlds. And that took me um, back to Indiana University, um, where I did study what was happening inside of virtual worlds and then realized that actually making them was much more interesting. Um, so <laughs> I, shifted, I shifted my paths and I started working on a series of projects projects, not just in virtual worlds, but um, alternate reality games, um, as well as, you know, sort of more typical browser-based flash games that now nobody can play anymore. Um, <laughs> but then I, 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 I sort of pivoted into games education, and I, I've done that for about a decade now. Um, and then I joined Full Sail about three years ago, and it's been 
amazing. I've never uh, been to a place that understands just innately um, how hands-on and intense it is to make a creative project using technology. Um, and you know, you really can't learn about it from a book. That's right. No, you, you can can't. only do it. Mm -hmm. um, or you can have all the ideas you want, and then until you do it, you don't realize what works. It's not real. Um, exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'll be participating in the summit as well. I'm super excited. Um, I get to moderate a couple of panels. Um, but uh, yeah, especially for my students, you know, uh, learning how to use a real-time 3D rendering engine, which is what we now call a game engine, right? Because now we're using real-time 3D rendering engines for a lot more things than games, and um, particularly with people uh, with this skill set, you know, I think exposing yourself to the breadth of what immersive technology is doing and the ways in which you can employ those skills, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to marry different fields of interest and to create new solutions to problems that maybe don't we haven't even envisioned yet, uh, and there's just a an incredible array of inspiration to be found. So um, I'm really excited about participating. Thank you, Phoebe. Yeah. Uh, just to have an idea about uh, our uh, students we have today, um, if you can raise your hand, uh, do we have interactive technology and game design students here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I expected it to be the majority. Game development? Simulation? Yeah. Woo. Woo. Cyber and IT? Computer science? Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, and actually, uh, you will learn more about the Center for the Immersive Tech and how you can apply your skills and why is it important that we're bringing this event to you. We're not doing it for ourselves. Trust me. Like, I mean, we already have a career. This is really, we're doing it for you uh, and for you guys who are uh, learning, like um, joining us online, we're really trying to create extra opportunities for you guys. So just as Phoebe said, not necessarily think about it as because you are in gaming that you're going to be working in the gaming industry. There are so many other opportunities where you can apply your skills. Um, so let's go back to us and uh, the projects that we're working on. Orlando here is the Meta Center, uh, and it is the hub for simulation and for tech. Um, we all know that. Uh, and um, when we're talking about the Meta Center, simulation, uh, we have all these games, uh, gaming companies here, and simulation companies, and aerospace and defense, and all the different technologies here. Um, Immersive technology is really in the center of all of that. Uh, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, and so on uh, are a big uh, technology that's being used in all these different um, uh, sectors. Um, so let's go back to right now to your organizations, and maybe let's talk about one or some of the groundbreaking augmented reality and virtual reality projects that your companies uh, your company is working on, uh, and. I'm going to look at you, Karis. I know that probably with Unity you cannot share much, but just to get our students inspired about what we have right now. Absolutely. Um, one of my favorite projects um, that I can talk about is the uh, the digital twin that we now have. Yes. Uh, the Smart Cities project. Do you guys know doing. what digital twin is? So a digital twin is a, a word that we now use to describe a 3D model, however, backed up with a large amount of data. So it is a purposeful 3D model that represents something in real in the real world. Um, it's a term that's been used for a very long time, and it, it, as you know, the games side, which is now the real-time 3D side, um, it's, a, it's kind of our way of reaching a hand over into the simulation side and saying, like, we are the same. You know, we're going to use your your word, and uh, we can support you in your efforts. Um, so these digital twins, um, in particular the Smart Cities Project, uh, is you know, in the Orlando Economic Partnership, uh, we are creating this. We have created this digital twin of Orlando for the purpose of bringing resources into the city, exactly. because that's that's what it's all about in the end. Because we are able to do what we do when everybody has what they need. Right, we can be creative when we're taken care of. Um, so uh, I would encourage you all to check it out. It's really exciting stuff. 
Yeah, so when we're talking uh, specifically um, about the Orlando um, Economic Partnership, uh, they're really using the digital twin to bring investors. Uh, so instead of having the investors come to Orlando trying to figure out where they're going to be located and drive for days, they can you can just put the headset, look at the where what Orlando are, uh, where where Orlando is and how things are positioned in Orlando, have all the data that you need in terms of demographics, services, and so on, and then, uh, and then decide what kind of services exactly. uh, are needed in certain And make decisions. Area. And make decisions based on that. And it's better um, than being in a car all day long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for you guys, when you're coming from the interactive technology and gaming or CS or IT and cyber or simulation, this is really the core of your degree. Uh, like we're teaching you those skills that are necessary to build a platform like that. So um, uh, yes, we're talking about the digital twin, and maybe it's a product that Unity is developing. But there are so many other different applications for digital twin. Um, uh, just in a hospital, for example, Advent Health can create a digital twin to um, uh, streamline their like uh, operations and so on. So it's just I'm trying to connect to what you're le learning about right now to what exists in the industry, so that you can see where you have some career paths there. Ariane. Yes, and to build on what they were just sharing, <clears throat> when I was spent my time at Unity working on the, the team, uh, a huge part of what we worked on were digital twins. Um, so the easiest way, I think, to wrap your mind around it is that it doesn't have to be a physical place. It can be a person as well. It can be a variety of things. So if you think about like your home, you may have like a ring doorbell, you may have like a thermostat, you may have a security system or power or AC, and there's maybe information being exchanged maybe with an app on your phone, right? So that you can make decisions about your household, right? Or you can see uh, who's at your door or if you received an Amazon package. Your home, in a sense, is a mini smart city. Does that make sense? But it can also be a hospital, like Dr. Mamar said, and I've seen that actually um, with a variety of settings where everything from the sutures to the desk in a hospital and the walls, it's all a twin and it's exchanging information in real time. Um, Singapore has a, a really, is a really cool place that has a, a digital twin that's exchanging. NOAA exchanges information. Um, there's a number of research schools that gather that information and they exchange it. And they are able to make decisions um, about real estate and business and um, even empowering individuals to own their own information, right? So it's really kind of a neat space. And one of my, the most interesting is when you could own your own digital twin of yourself and have a conversation with yourself based on information that you've uploaded, um, thoughts, ideas, things of that nature. You may have seen avatars recently that do that, right? Um, and maybe you can apply your own persona to it. Or your future children would have somebody to reference, or grandchildren or great-grandchildren. So there's some neat uh, use cases for that. Thank you. Phoebe, uh, can you talk about some of the groundbreaking AR or VR projects that we're working on here at Tulsa University, or maybe outside of Tulsa? Of Wilson. course. So, yeah. yeah, of course. I'd be delighted. Um, so uh, one of the ones I'm super excited about, because it's a work in progress right now in our simulation and visualization degree program, we have a student whose background is uh, working for animal control services. Um, and as you might imagine, the people who work in that environment are often faced with unpredictable circumstances, um, some of which can turn into pretty dangerous circumstances. You know, I wouldn't want to have to deal with a lot of the Florida wildlife uh, personally myself, so um, I can definitely respect that this is uh, an opportunity where something like an augmented reality trainer, which is what uh, Brianna is currently working on, um, that that could really solve a lot of problems in training. So that's one of the ones I'm really excited about. It's um, kind of an early stage of development. Uh, they're still troubleshooting some of the technology, uh, but that'll be a simulation and trainer um, as she matriculates through the degree program. Um, and of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Pat Starace and his F1 race car project. Um, personally, I get really excited every time I have an opportunity to go check out the F1 car. Um, but Pat is actually going to be one of the panelists on uh, 
a panel I'm moderating on Thursday, uh, talking about community building. And the direction that they've taken the F1 project is really cool to me, um, especially as um, an example of immersive technology. So there is a simulated component of this project, um, but Pat's uh, vision for its full execution is actually a room scale mixed reality experience where not only can I hop into a life-size F1 car and be an F1 driver, but I can also watch my friends do it and be part of the experience. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the aspects that I think is so key about immersive technologies is actually thinking about how um, we as the audience or we as spectators are also participating and engaging. Um, and that's part of where the connection that comes from immersive tech uh, is, you know, where that evolves from and, and um, the connections that people are making inside of the technology is, to me, what is the most exciting about it. So I love seeing some of those examples getting developed Thank here. Thank you, and I, I agree with you. I'm looking forward to experiencing the Formula One and feel myself as a, like driving an F1 and feel that um, uh, the force back and so on. Um, so being in the tech industry, being programmers or artists, or, I mean, we're all in, in this, we're always encountering challenges. But specifically when we're talking about immersive technology, there is a big challenge that we're always um, how to say it, like it's really encountering or facing, uh, I mean, the obvious one is the hardware. Uh, sometimes the idea exists, uh, the technology can be delivered, but the hardware is not there yet. Uh, and uh, we cannot really uh, find something on a hardware that exists that really can adapt to what we're trying to experience, not really what we're trying to develop. Um, so um, can you discuss one challenge that you encountered uh, while developing an uh, augmented reality or virtual reality uh, project, and how did your team collaborate and problem solve to uh, figure out uh, a solution for that? Absolutely. So um, yes to everything you said. I can remember when the um, the SLAM algorithms were not keeping up with what we needed and we would have to abandon projects because uh, the things that we were being asked to do were just plain science fiction. Once you start doing things you never knew were possible, you start getting more and more asked, well, what else can we do? What else can we do? And suddenly yeah. it's, oh, I can't, write, can't quite do that, um, but maybe later. And yes, it, later on the hardware does get better and you can do those things. Um, so one of the challenges is constantly learning, constantly updating. Your, your own skill set um, to keep up because you have to be up on the new hardware in order to keep up with everything else. One of the challenges in particular um, is because things are always changing and updating, um, you know, I might uh, design something that has been requested maybe for a local space UI and um, you know I make it diegetic and I focus on uh, it being grokkable at the moment someone jumps into the experience right um, because they don't have a lot of time and they have to understand exactly what they're doing so I'm studying all these different things and I'm making sure that this one's perfect but all these different pieces of hardware have certain button mappings and um, and, and some of them have fewer or more buttons available. Um, and then you get to the end of the project and then you have to change hardware. Um, so how do we overcome that? Well, you just jump back into your equi-rectangular grid and you try to focus on how is this one going to work this time? You know, try to, to adapt the best that you can. Thank you. Yep. I mean, I guess. It's part of how we do it here at Fulsa anyway. We're like always adapting. Every time there is a new technology or a new thing out, we that's just have to adapt all of our curriculum. And that's what I learned here at yeah. Full Sail is yeah. how to learn and how to adapt. How to adapt. Well, thank you for that. Ayan. Yes. Well, with immersive tech or XR in general, you know, like Karis was mentioning, you can kind of, you can really build anything you can imagine in a sense, right? And so... That is a huge opportunity to have challenges or troubleshooting or problem solving that you could probably not imagine until you're living in the experience, which can be very frustrating uh, and time consuming. Fortunately for me, I always had really great teammates at Unity and even now that I can call when I'm in a GIF and need help with some things. Um, but I would say that um, 
there's two parts of that. The one of them is the uh, team building challenges, right? When you're building a team to build a product or to tackle a challenge like in a hackathon or something like that, right? Uh, and then there's also, you know, an experience. Like I can give an example where um, I jumped in to help with a little bit more of a technical component on a, a project we were doing down in Miami at Miami Art Week. May, you may have heard of that down there, um, Art Basel. Um, but we created a meditation experience and uh, loading it onto the Quest 3s, which at the time were brand new, and getting it to load properly and like for to have that user experience that we had where we might have hundreds of thousands of people walk through, so there wasn't a lot of time to make sure it was just right. That was a really neat experience to go through, and what really helped our team was that we had so many diverse individuals with different backgrounds and experiences that it helped us get to the goal much quicker. Um, and then as far as like the team building component, um, it's one of my favorite things. So when I go and help out with like, like MIT Reality Hack, I went up to Boston this last MIT Reality Hack, which was maybe, gosh, maybe three or four months ago. Um, and uh, helping build the teams, because some teams might show up with two or three people, and then figuring out what kind of teammate they need that makes sense, not only personality, but skill level. And that was like, I was the matchmaker. So somebody would come in from Peru, somebody would come in from California, they're like, I need a team, can you help me? Sure. So that was really fun uh, problem solving and troubleshooting and, and then seeing them create and go through the ideation process of creating things, that for me was like magic. And to kind of see the personality sh shine through and the collaborative effort. So for me, that was a challenge in itself to see the process and really kind of magical. Thank you, Ariane. Phoebe, we don't have challenges at all. We never have challenges, <laughs> uh, especially when you're about to present something in tech. Things never go wrong, right? Um, <laughs> right, right before the presentation. And it always happens to tech people. <laughs> it's like a technical problem for tech people. Right, right. Um, so I think. You know, certainly in an educational environment and certainly the way that we do things at Full Sail, um, because uh, we're so focused on uh, mastering these technical skill sets, uh, I think one of, the, one of the challenges is creating venues where the students have an opportunity to work with each other and work on cross-disciplinary teams, which is mirroring what your real life is going to be like in careers. Um, but you know, so certainly it's a challenge to get students together in those kinds of environments. But um, actually, I'm really excited because, um, well, I think part of the, the value of it is really, you know, as a game designer, um, and I'm sur sure my students can relate to this, you know, ideally I'd like to control everything. <laughs> um, it, we'll keep it inside of a game, right? But, um, you know, it's it's, really easy to think that you have the best solution to a problem when you're the only person that's working on it. Um, and however vast your skill set might in fact be, what's magical about working on a team is seeing how much other people bring to the table and that they're able to conceive of things, to perceive things, and to solve problems in a way that maybe you haven't considered. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think, so I'm very excited actually, I just kicked off, um, one of the new initiatives that our career development program has um, has devised is something called Full Sail Runway. Um, and through the Runway initiative, I've brought together a, a mixed um, degree uh, group team uh, who have graduated grads, um, who've graduated from an array of different degree programs. And so we'll be making a little, um, a little game incubator. Um, and so, uh, you know, creating opportunities and venues for our students to be able to collaborate in that way. I think, you know, immersive technologies is the place where whatever your subject matter expertise, you can bring it to bear in that environment, um, whether you have the technical skills or not. Um, and so that I'm really excited about as maybe possibly a way to address that challenge. Um, but certainly gaining the benefit of other people's skill is a challenge. Um, and, and one that I think is key for setting people up for success in the industry. I love it. So talking about skills, um, this week actually, um, on Thursday and Friday, we are hosting the Central Florida Immersive Tech Summit uh, uh, for its second year. Yes. <laughs> yes, Ariane. Year two. <laughs> What's that? Year, year two. two. Exactly. But this year, we're going big. Last year was only one day where so we much tried bigger. to yeah. 
put the panels, the tech expo, the career fair and everything together. This year we're trying to have the, um, um, uh, both, uh, well, the students and the public uh, have the opportunity to really experience everything, not to be jammed and they cannot be in everything at the same time. So we have uh, on Thursday, that's only panels, and we will be having six tracks. We have the future of immersive tech, education and training, which is a full day, uh, immersive tech and hospitality, immersive tech and healthcare, immersive tech and arts and entertainment, including gaming, uh, and X uh, XR hands workshop. XR hands on uh, workshop, but then also aerospace and defense. That's right. Yeah, the aerospace and defense. Whew. So six tracks, uh, and uh, we are bringing a hundred speakers, and those are not only from uh, the Central Florida region. Uh, we have international speakers right. who are coming to talk to you guys and share their latest development in immersive technology in their own sectors. We are bringing, as Ariane said, a full day of hands-on experiences, uh, a workshop. So we have a Unity workshop in the morning on how to develop using the Apple, uh, Vision, Pro. The Apple Vision Pro. And we have uh, Dr. Masan from the Masan yes. Spine Institute who will be showing how to use immersive technology in, uh, in surgeries. Surgery. Yeah, so, pretty awesome. I mean, this is big. Uh, again, as much as I say, the people who are coming are huge. Uh, uh, like uh, industry experts in the field, uh, um, it's, I, I, yeah. I think I'm it's, not giving it enough. It's uh, really for you guys, and I want you to, to take that. You guys have this great responsibility to make really cool stuff in the next so many years. And how we get there is we bring the people doing really cool things so that you can meet them and get new ideas and learn about what's happening in the space. And not to get overwhelmed by the XR Hands Workshop, it's there for people who are wanting to learn, maybe even they've never experienced those types of things. It's for you. It's entry level. I actually spoke to Gary House today on my way here. Um, he was on my team over at Unity, and he's a good friend as well, but he's been working with uh, Unity uh, since, gosh, the ver first version, like, I don't know, 20 years now almost. But um, he'll be with the XR Hands Workshop as well. But the biggest thing to remember is that here in Central Florida, we have a $6 billion, sim well, plus now, simulation industry to support. Exactly. And so you guys are in this, like, X marks the spot, really cool place and time to just really take the bull by the horns and tap into the resources. And these thought leaders and innovators are coming from all over to showcase what they're doing and have conversations with you guys. So I really hope you guys can show up and show out and take advantage of it. And if, uh, you know, if there's anything we can do to support, please let me know, but I'm excited to see you guys there. Um, there was one other thing, we have the Women in Tech Breakfast. Um, as well, um, so I, you know that's going to be incredible. Uh, and then we have the career fair, so I definitely want to see you there. Um, if you're not graduating soon, you still want to go and talk to companies and find out like what are they looking for, and expectations, and what's the industry like, what's the buzz on the street, right? Um, and then also the tech expo, where you can see some really neat stuff. It's going to be awesome. So the career fair is going to be at the live venue. The tech expo is going to be here at the Fortress. So that's Friday, 11 to 4. And then the panels are going to be 3B. We're taking over all 3B to be able to have uh, these uh, different panels. If you're not registered, please go ahead and register. Um, you can go on Full Sail uh, University website, events, and then you will find the link there. Or you can reach out to me or any one of us here, yeah. and we'll send you the link. But it's very important for you to register. Um, so each one of you is collaborating or involved in the Central Florida Immersive Tech Summit in a way. Like, so. Um, Yes, how about you Let, tell us more about what you will be doing at the Immersive Tech Summit? And um, let's talk about why is it important to be there as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk in D um, at the Immersive Tech Summit. I uh, am so excited because um, this is a really cool time. Um, there are a lot of really crazy cool stuff happening in the indie game scene. Um, and I just can't wait to tell you all about it. I'll share my journey from, you know, prototype to where we are today. I'll talk a little bit about, you know, the business side, the 
the struggles of being a creative while also trying to uh, be a professional and run a business. Um, and uh, keeping that spirit alive and going on a daily basis, because it is, it is quite a, a is quite a, a, a marathon, you know? It, it is, um, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, and it's important for you to be coming to the, the Tech Summit because this has been a really difficult year for the industry. Um, and I think that we all need to come together and support one another and um, show up and uh, get inspired and, you know, not only, you know, benefit your mental health to reconnect with your community, but it's also really good for your morale. Like, maybe it'll spark something again for you. Um, and hopefully, you know, you'll find something that really connects with you. And when people with like minds come together, amazing things happen. Exactly. And this is an opportunity for that to happen. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You spoke I, to them. <laughs> yes. I, I really think what she said, what Kara said, was really very valuable. And, um, you know, we're in this really unique space where there's lots of inspiration, and it's figuring out what matters, Can you keep it what matters to you. Sorry, <laughs> the microphone. Um, but what matters to you? And unless you start exploring the community through events and what's happening, you won't ever really tap into that, and you'll do yourself a disservice. And... So events like this are to get the community involved um, because we have this great responsibility to build ourselves into the future of the 3D internet. That's what we're doing. And there's nothing, there's no place that's really going to be untouched by that if you haven't noticed, you know, from banking to real estate to healthcare to entertainment. And it's just such a special time to be part of these things. But I would say get involved in the community and not just with this event, this is the start, right? Get involved and, uh, and get involved in the community and start connecting with others. Um, it's a really rich environment that you guys have here in the area and that's really what brought me to where I am is I was so inspired and I thought, I want to help. I want to be part of it. And so I hope that you guys find that within yourselves and you're super inspired to start taking action and connecting in the community because we are the meta center. And we always joke about it, but it's not just a place in our heart. You know, uh, Orlando is uh, building themselves a framework to be a leading top tech city in the world. And this is our home. Yeah, and people, I don't think, uh, sometimes people here, locals, yeah. understand what we're all trying to build together. Yeah. Sometimes in different cities, you don't find... Um, There's fragmentation. Like, exactly, there are fragmentations that yeah. are siloed, but here we're all really working yes. together, coming up to, like, coming together and lifting each other. We see each other way each too other. much. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> At every event. And there's so many great um, community organizations as well as the VRAR. And I'm so grateful to, you know, universities like Full Sail because they see the value. And Dr. Mamar has been such a big cheerleader for the community and so involved um, in bringing that to her students as well. And so there's no other place in time like the present to say yes, get involved, and start making cool stuff and collaborating. By the way, uh, the VRAR Association, we are a partner of the VRAR Association, so which means that all of you all students of you. have access to anything, all their uh, workshops and trainings and education uh, uh, curriculum and so on, all of that is accessible for you, uh, to you for free. So um, just, um, uh, I mean, uh, I yes, guess so they I have the share my email with exactly. you. Yeah, it's Arian, A-R-I-A-N-E, at the T H E V R A R A dot com. And like Dr. Mamar said, um, all of you are also members. And so I would, I would challenge you to get involved because there's no other place where you could have access to thought leaders, innovators, all in a space um, to help yourself on your own journey and what that looks like. But ultimately, it's truly about collaboration. We have to work together, diverse individuals with different ideas. Like, we have to do it together. There's no other way. And it's just going to take us longer if we don't. So we've got to do it now. And so I'm glad that you guys are all here today. Phoebe. Oh, sure. So I'm very excited about this summit. Um, so I, I get to moderate a 
three panels, and really each one of them came out of questions that I had for the industry. <laughs> um, so uh, the first one is um, about best practices uh, for AI and immersive technologies in education, which, you know, surprise, I need some tips on how to use some of those things. So um, I find it's very easy to do research and find concepts and, ha and see a lot of sort of promoted solutions for various kinds of problems or opportunities, um, but very little uh, expert knowledge that I feel I can rely on to implement things into my work, my already busy workflow, and of course introduce things into the student experience. Um, the second panel is about the future of real-time 3D rendering, um, which as I said is what we're now calling game engines. Um, don't be a dinosaur, don't call it a game engine anymore. <laughs> because it's not limited to games. And that's really why I brought this panel together is to talk about people from a variety of backgrounds who are using real-time 3D rendering software to do things that aren't making games. Um, although Such we'll, as? <laughs> we will include games, yeah. yes. uh, but it's going to cover virtual production, architectural exactly. visualization, uh, simulation and training, uh, as well as games. Perfect. So, and on, on my part, so we are the host, we are uh, the sponsors of the education and training track, and then I will be moderating panels, but also I will be speaking on a panel uh, where we're talking about uh, the um, uh, future talent of, immersed, like, of the ecosystem. So what is needed in the industry? How can we all work together to make sure that our students are ready? And part of, as Arian said, uh, said part of us bringing this conference here uh, to you guys and to like making it open and free uh, uh, is to make sure that our students, our grads, and the talent that we have here at uh, in Orlando is ready for what the industry is uh, um, expecting or is looking for. Uh, we have several companies that are now moving to Orlando because of yes. our ecosystem uh, and because of the set of different tech companies that exist here, whether in the metaverse, whether it's gaming, whether it's healthcare technology, fitness technology, uh, entertainment, uh, I mean, virtual production, all of it exists here in Orlando. Simulation, of course, and aerospace and defense. All of it exists in Orlando, and we have more companies coming here because of this rich uh, ecosystem. I wanted to share, Dr. Mamar, that last year I spent some time traveling uh, to visit um, innovators in our industry, that, like companies and organizations in government, aerospace, and defense. And I was really proud to know that often when I would go and I would meet with the developers, that some of them just brand new in their first role um, as a grad, right? We're from Full Sail University. So, you know, the industry is looking to Full Sail um, to bring well rounded individuals to do this type of work. And, I mean, right off the jump, and I was so impressed with that, you know, at Huntsville, and I've seen things with uh, developers in Phoenix, and California, and New York, and Florida, and even in the Midwest. So, um, the work that Dr. Mamar is doing is, it doesn't go Without it's the whole team, it's the yeah, it's a whole team, team. yeah, for sure. But uh, you guys are everywhere and keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're proud of it. Um, so, one big component of the Central Florida Immersive Tech Summit is the Women in Tech Breakfast. And uh, Arianne and I, I mean, and every one of you, I'm sure uh, uh, you're, we're all passionate about empowering female uh, to be more in the tech industry. Um, which brings me to the topic of diversity and inclusion and why this is important uh, for us within the tech industry uh, to make sure that um, uh, we're really talking about uh, diversity and inclusion to foster growth uh, and innovation. Um, so can you define what diversity and inclusion is for you? Uh, and um, maybe... Um, talk about a challenge, if you have any uh, challenges that you encountered uh, in the tech industry. I mean, we're all female. Part of this is that, look at my panel today. It's all female leaders in the industry with different backgrounds, but they're all very successful. And they didn't get it. I mean, I know from my personal experience, I am 100% sure that there is no way that they, it was uh, a road <laughs> filled of roses there <laughs> for no. you. So um, maybe just uh, talk of why is it important to have uh, inclusion and diversity in the tech field and some of the challenges that you encountered there. 
And how did you address them? Yeah. Um, so I define DEI as a, a concept. It's a it's a it's a changing of a thought pattern that um, we need to be con considering. It's about um, kindness, and it's about um, consideration, and it's about um, taking a look at. Um, your preconceived notions and taking pause and wondering if um, you know if you were correct in your first assumption. Um, I know that some of the challenges that we might encounter is that, um, uh, as the same with anyone else in this situ situation, um, the reputation of yourself and uh, those who preceded you, as, as well as those who come behind you, they, they, it matters. Um, it all kind of plays into one another. So we have the challenge of carrying um, the, the reputation of ourselves as well as everyone who comes after us. Um, uh, it, it is a burden, but it is something that we do pridefully because um, there's no better work that we can do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have this incredible opportunity um, when we collaborate with others <clears throat> to not only overcome our own bias, but to draw on the perspectives of others and, and to help us become better individuals for that, right? And so um, I know because of you know the interactions and encounters I've had, that um, sometimes we challenge, we're challenged with personalities and different views and things like that. But I will tell you, if you take a moment to have just enough compassion to really listen um, when you're meeting new people, and I would even also challenge you to to meet somebody new um, within this space that maybe you never had a conversation with, and how uh, what you might realize comes from that conversation, and so. That's a challenge I would give you is to meet somebody new in this space, uh, definitely this week at the conference, at the summit. Um, but also, uh, perspective is everything. And there's a lot of power in that. Um, and you can really learn a lot from other individuals uh, and um, have a sense of connectedness. And it feels good when you win together with people that maybe you never knew the potential of what could come from it, the unknown, right? Um, so I would say, you know, definitely that challenge of connecting with somebody new this week um, and have conversations about uh, different things that maybe you wouldn't always share that might help you with some of the projects you're working on, for sure. Phoebe. Uh, yeah, so I think diversity is, <laughs> You know, it is the seeds of life, right? When we talk about it in nature, a diverse ecosystem is a healthy ecosystem. And I think that that's true of tech and any industry um, and any community really is that, uh, and what diversity brings to the table, you know, I've certainly been the only woman in a room in plenty of tech situations. Um, and and what you realize is that when you bring a unique perspective into the room and when you have mixed perspectives in the room is you identify problems that maybe you yourself are unaware with, are unaware of or not confronted with. Um, and then that gives you the opportunity to solve problems. And when you're talking about solving problems in the tech industry, you're talking about business solutions. You're talking about billion dollar company opportunities because you've identified and solved problems that maybe the rest of the room never thought thought of mm -hmm. because it yes. doesn't affect them. And, um, and so that's why inviting people into the room that represent diverse, you know, certainly nationalities, yes. diverse genders, diverse perspectives, that's the way that you identify a fuller, more complete vision and then address it in ways that maybe, uh, you know, create opportunities for other people. Love it. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> so um, we're running out of time. I mean, like, I, I, I didn't even see the time fly. Uh, I want to ask one last question before I turn into the uh, questions from our online audience and questions from our students here uh, at the Fortress. Uh, one last question is, um, what are your predictions of, um, for the future of immersive technology and how uh, will, the, will it uh, impact uh, various, in various industries? I mean, I, I, it, the things that we were thinking about 
five years ago that we thought would happen in 10 years are now happening. And it's, it's staggering to, to think about. Um, I like to talk about you know, the, the repurposing of the American Mall. And those things are already happening. Turning all those giant spaces into entertainment spaces, um, like large scale mixed reality. you know, um, And also you know, turning those spaces into housing. That's important. Um, but as far as like immersive technology, um, I think we're at the, at, on the cusp of the next golden age of arcades. And that includes our immersive reality arcade uh, experiences, the giant ones uh, that take up an entire room and can only fit in certain places, um, as well as um, homebrewed experiences. Uh, people with dreams and creativity that are going for it and have a dream and they actually have a space to put those places and they have a market that wants to buy those places. Um, you know, someone who says, I want to make a crazy thing. And then someone else is like, yeah, yeah, I, w <laughs> I want that. Um, so when, when creativity and opportunity meet, that's, that's, uh, that's a really amazing thing to, to happen. And then, of course, we're going to talk about like the evolution of the smartphone and what's going to happen there. And we all know that. But do we? Um, I have a story about that. We need to talk about that sometime. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, um, you know, as we, like, you know, approach the next few years, I, I do think that there's a, the lines of reality and XR are just kind of really blending and blurring. And it, we see it already in so many parts of our lives, right? Like augmented reality on our cell phones. And we use it in a, a large capacity, whether you realize it or not. Um, so you can fight it all you want, but it's there and it's, it's going to start coming much faster now. You know, the technology, as far as the hardware, we need some more work to put into it, but we need creators doing that. And that leads into what I was going to share with you is that this is a creator's world. And that is a huge empowerment tool for you guys, especially. Um, and so I think it's important to remember that really it's about the developers and the creators driving this space. We're all supporting characters. You guys are the people that hold the power. And it's just about connecting with the right individuals, with the right resources to really unlock your full potential. And so whatever it is that drives you, tap into it because you will get an extra battery pack when you find it and you will be unstoppable. And it's the best feeling in the world to do the things you love every day and make things and solve challenges and help people. It's incredible. Um, so I think that's important. And the other part of that is, is that um, we say metaverse, 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 right? And it's even for me, it's a level of comfort because people have like, they have an understanding of what that means at this moment, right? But it's evolving. It's a living, breathing thing at this moment. And what that really looks like to give you perspective is XR is one component. I want to remind you of that. So you have, you know, XR, you have you know, digital twins in smart cities. You have blockchain, and I'm a, that is, XR and blockchain are going to have a big love affair very soon. And then you have a, um, you know, AI, right, which is the the wave right now, which is very important and prompting and things like that, which is also a creativity thing, so and creator thing. But when all of those pillars, I guess you could say, are communicating, and we're in the beginning, but when they're all talking and individuals have ownership over their, they're empowered by their own information and um, the creators are empowered by it and all of that's happening, that is when we have a true metaverse. So we're still building it and you guys have this incredible opportunity to lay the framework and foundation. And I want to remind you that XR is you know, digital twins, but it's also putting rocket ships into space. It's training piter, uh, fighter pilots. Um, it's, uh, you know, your Coinbase account in a sense, right? It can be a, a user interface or user experience that you have. It could be playing video games, but it touches every part of our lives. And so think about what that means to you and then make a path and then see how it evolves. Thank, Thank you, you for teeing up my answer so perfectly. Um, my prediction for the future of immersive technologies is the breaking down of barriers and the blending of skill sets. Uh, because, um, and this is actually a little bit based on some of what I saw at GDC. I think that the, you know, there the distinctions between things like film and games, and uh, you know 
pick pretty much any other creative medium, um, are really blurring. And that means that you know you might graduate with a degree in game design and make films, or graduate with a degree in film and end up working inside of a 3D <laughs> or real-time rendering engine, right? Um, and so I think uh, because of that, what you carry in your backpack is a skill set and you carry adaptability. And that is, we, we, we really have an opportunity right here, again, to create new methods for expressing ourselves and for communicating and creating community. Um, and so the breaking down of those barriers uh, and, and certainly diversity is an aspect of that, um, I think is probably one of the most exciting things about this moment in time. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I, I want to give at least 10 minutes to, uh, for our audience, both here uh, and online, to ask questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead and go to the mic, uh, and uh, uh, I can, uh, we can take the questions. Hi. Please Hello. Enter, uh, tell, your tell us your name, the program you're in, and then the question. And if it's directed to any person, specifically. Okay. Um, I'm Nick. Uh, I'm a few months away from finishing my game design bachelor's. OK, so you're um, going to be at the career fair on Friday? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> Good answer. Um, uh, my question isn't directed to anyone in particular. Um, but I, I don't think I'm alone in this room in my experience, which has been uh, deciding to pursue an education in game design through a love for video games and making video games. Yes. Um, but during that education, finding out that those skills could be used uh, for all different types of things and in all different industries. And my question is, how do I know uh, if I could also have a passion for those things or you know, in, in a, a space where there's so many different options, uh, how to find out if any of those uh, would be something that I would want to do. Try Just them. do it. I was, I was I'm like, <laughs> I can't take it, I can't take it. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Karis. And then, I mean, I guess we all have like, advice. Just do it. <laughs> um, I, I uh, in any opportunity that I was given, I said yes. Um, my list of failures is longer than my list of successes. Um, and I can tell you to just try it. And, you know, passion is a funny thing, and what it ends up being is that you're passionate about being really into something. And you can kind of trick yourself into being really into something. Like, um, you can study something, and then you find something fascinating, and then there's something else fascinating, and then, wait a minute, this is actually really cool. Oh, wow, there's like a mystery in here. What's going on with this? Um, and and you, we are inquisitive as people. I mean, you're, you're a game designer, so I know that you're the take it apart and put it back together guy. And so no matter what the subject matter is, if you apply yourself, you're going to be that guy taking it apart and putting it back together. Um, so I encourage you to if you're given an opportunity, because that, that's, that's the foot in the door situation. Someone says, I have a problem, and you say, I, me. And, and you make a solution for it, or you just, you take the job, and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, and then you find out nobody else does either. Um, and uh, so just do it. I would add to that is um, uh, just my personal experience, as uh, Kara said, I'm a comp uh, my background is in computer engineering, and that applies to anything. And like, I'm a developer, then I will be developing anything. <laughs> and then after I finish my PhD, uh, the first, and it's so funny because my PhD was in simulation and gaming, but then the first experience that was given to me is to work for the stock exchange. Completely two different fields. But I didn't even think about it twice because I needed that opportunity because I didn't know whether I like it or not. I knew deep inside that I did not like business. I don't understand business. That's not for me. It's uh, just like some words that they're repeating. They explained it so many times, and I have no idea what they're talking about. But I went for it. And um, I loved it. But then I was more passionate about simulation. Uh, and that's why I came to Full Sail, because that's where my passion is. Yes. But I never turn down uh, an opportunity. I never say, no, uh, my passion is in games or is in simulation. Then I'm not going to try this out. Like, try everything. If, um, if you're finding out, for example, about virtual production, probably some of the things that now uh, we're trying to educate all of the game design students that their skills are applicable in so many different industries. Well, we have V1. 
like, you're here, you're a campus student, just walk and go to V1 and tell them you want to try things with them. Like, they will figure out a way even, like, to, like, have you work on a project so that you can experience that. Um, just find opportunities and trust me when I tell you, myself and Phoebe and everyone from the V1, they will all, we will all create that opportunity, opportunity for you uh, as you're still an active student so you don't have to waste time later on uh, just for you to be exposed to that. If there are other opportunities, I'm sure, I mean, we have a variety of things where your skills can be applied. If it exists here at Full Sail, we'll open the doors for you. So just do it. Any other things? Oh, no, I think you guys covered it. I was going to see if we could a answer a question from online. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you so much, Nick. Okay, the next question online is, um, uh, what trends are emerging in the tech industry regarding women and inclusion? I'd like to say, I'm going to take this one. Um, vulnerability yeah. and uh, true connection um, and friendship and taking a moment outside of our careers to connect in a way that matters um, for our human needs. Um, Love that. Yes. Yeah. It, Love it, that that you're saying this. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's valuable to have not only um, uh, you're filling your cup in a way that's technical and you're getting certifications or you're studying or, or you're binge watching YouTube tutorials, whatever you're doing, um, it's also important to um, recharge your creative self, which um, involves so many different facets of your humanity. And you cannot have one without the other. So you cannot be working all the time. <laughs> and so when we come together um, regarding you know, the, the specific question, women and, and inclusion and everything, um, you know, it, it, this matters for everyone. And I think that when we all recognize each other as humans, we are all so much better off. That's great. Thank you. Next question here. Uh, yeah, so my name's Ethan Brown. I'm also in game design. And this is kind of a, like pulling back into like the virtual, re virtual reality aspect. Uh, do you guys ever think we'll have like a full dive system? Say so same something that like, um, Say you put on like your virtual reality headset or something like that, and uh, it takes the signals from your brain, and you can pilot a character in a virtual world. Hmm. Wow. You mean just with like, brain signals? Like yes. Neuro, that's a, yeah. yeah. There well, are definitely yeah. neurological implants that are already doing this, uh, particularly in the field of performance enhancement, uh, and so yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Mean, I don't think that like it's a, it exists right now in immersive technology specifically, but I, I, I mean, I see that happening anytime soon specifically. Yeah. Human performance is a huge area uh, in XR. Um, and uh, actually, a, a number of um, our VR era members who work in these spaces throughout government, defense, and aerospace will be speaking at the event on Thursday. So you'll want to come out, like Trista from Booz Allen. Uh, yeah, and uh, some of the team well, there. We but have the Orlando Health as well. Orlando we'll Health as well. The, uh, yeah. But this is more for human performance. I think what he's trying to say is that how you can control. Uh, oh, like a game, like a Ready play. Player One type situation. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I mean, I, I literally, it, people like to play games. So I any do. tech that's out there that could possibly be used for games can and will be used for games. If this isn't currently under development, I would be surprised if it wasn't within the year. If someone's money wants it. That's right. Okay, Thank you. <laughs> Next question online. How does, cre how does creative writing fit into the tech and gaming? Well, it's just easy. Everything's prompting. You know, how you put your words together is even how you will be creating games very soon, right? It won't even really be as strong as the development. It's the prompting to create experiences, right? So um, I don't know what you have to, to say about that from a technical. I was going to say, as a narrative designer yeah. for many years, I can say that you write stuff <laughs> that is inside of games, like That's dialogue. Right. Exactly. And, um, I mean, even the... Even the text-based prompts that tell you what to do inside of a game often are written by someone with an MFA yep. um, into a, an Excel spreadsheet, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's, 
Well, actually, Google nowadays, Google they're Google probably Google. not doing it that Google way Google. anymore. But that's, that's what I, I was writing a lot of dialogue into Excel spreadsheets back in the day. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's definitely useful. Yeah. Yep. Storytelling. Exactly. I'd tech like writing. To see those. Narrative. <laughs> All of it. Yep. I can, if I could find them. <laughs> Next question. Uh, hi, I'm, my name is Jake. I'm a Simvis student here at Full Sail. Um, my question's kind of like two parts, uh, a little long, but I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. Uh, when you're talking about digital twin cities, uh, do you ever see a day similar to his full dive experience of a, do you ever see a day where digital cities will become our cities, where we're actually interacting more with our digital cities than we are our physical cities? And my second part to that question is with companies like Disney who are really into the idea of owning your information and especially with uh, the recent things that they've been doing with uh, human libraries where they're downloading their actors and keeping digital footprints of all of their faces and looks and all that. How do we ensure that they don't own my information or your information or how do I keep my information as mine? We got to keep updating the law with our technology, which is historically very difficult. It's only mildly caught up at this point. Um, and your first question, um, I, who, who knows? I, I don't know. But, but my personal feeling is um, I think that we're going to hit a point and then we're going to uh, re reincorporate our, uh, what, what our, um, Ethics. Our, our natural selves want, like uh, like how we, we'll, we'll step so far into the technology world that yes, ethically, like we need to take a step back and take a look at not only our impact on the planet, but um, our impact to one another. And we're gonna be using technology in order to become, become better, you know, I hope. Um, and so I, in, in my utopia brain, um, we're using technology to automate the things that, you know, for instance, uh, make sure that our, our, uh, our native plants are growing properly and that our, our wildlife is taken care of. Sustainable and development sustainable goals. Sustainable development goals, <laughs> that's a good one. And, and I think that we will be reconnecting with our earth and using technology to support that. I think that we as humans have a hard time del delving into the technology 100% because we lose side of ourselves. Well, also Digital Twin is part of the sustainable uh, goals. Uh, exactly. and it, it is, because we're trying to build uh, all the goals there right. are part of the Digital Twin, or Digital Twin is the technology to achieve those yes. goals. Um, so I don't think, and I agree with Karis, I don't think we're going to hit a point where like we're going to be living in the digital world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have the metaverse right now where people are there. but. Again, like for me, I'm, uh, I don't want to say I'm traditional when I'm not like... Nobody but really it's owns a, their own yeah. information anymore. Yeah. No matter what you think, there's really, unfortunately, I'm not saying it's right, but there's just no privacy, right? We just have to be honest with ourselves. Like, but there is something to be able to have and to be empowered to have, like to own your own information, right? I, I see that with some of the things that we're talking about. But there is an initiative that the VRARA, uh, the VRAR Association is working on with uh, the Virtual World Society. So if anybody's familiar with um, Tom Furness, he's the grandpapa of VR. He created virtual reality. And I actually have an interview with him next week. He's interviewing me in a fireside chat in the Engage platform if you want to join in. But the Virtual World Society, he used to work in government aerospace defense type stuff. Um, but he's on this initiative really about XR and technology for good. Because you really can't slow the train, right? Because how people use it is really up to the user, right? There's always going to be unfortunately, things that we can't control that even the best technologies will be used for nefarious things. It just is the nature of the beast, right? But you can counteract that with initiatives like the Virtual World Society has um, with uh, te using technology for good, an alliance for good. And so that's one of the projects we're working on at the VRAR Association in collaboration um, with some of our partners. And I've been having uh, weekly meetings with them because it is very important. So while you can't control the momentum, you can try and offset it with having the valuable and important conversations around the subject and taking action. Because all technology isn't meaningful for everyone. It has to make sense for the communities, right, that it impacts. Right? So um, in positive ways. And um, what's good for us here in Central Florida may not be great for a tribe in Oklahoma. So we have to look at the impact and what it means. And so it's a, 
work in progress. Sure. Thank you, Ariane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, third question online. How important is personal branding in the tech industry? And uh, guys, ladies, if we can keep our answers short because we have more people here and more answers online. It is important. Okay. <laughs> That's very important. Keep it simple. You need to establish your voice as a creator, and that is true for any industry. So your personal brand needs to reflect your voice, it needs to reflect your design priorities, it needs to reflect your integrity as a person. So it is key. Uh, just like you want your avatar to look in unique. Persona, yeah. Right. Um, your personal brand uh, in your industry is very similar to that. How do you want to walk around? Thank you. Next question here. Uh, hello. Hi. I am uh, Darius. Nice to meet you all. Um, nice to meet you. Which question, program? Oh, uh, game design. Okay. Uh, question specifically for Phoebe, but I'm welcome to any other answers. Uh, what would you recommend to someone who is looking to get into systems design yeah, or maybe what would you recommend for someone who isn't a fan of level design? Oh, well, you know, there's a lot to do in a game that isn't designing a level. It's true. Um, so if you want to get into systems design, I think, um, frankly, focusing on the overarching uh, systems of games, right? So. The easiest way for me to think about it, because this is my background, is what's happening in the real world? How do you abstract those inputs and outputs? What are the variables that affect this system that you're looking at? Um, and then how can you abstract them in a way that can become fun, right? So, you know, a game economy, for example, like what is valuable versus what currency you use to acquire that thing, that's a microcosm of the real world economy, but it's driven by all of the same features, right? The things that are sparkly and shiny are going to be the most valuable because they're the most rare. So we're going to acquire the most currency to get them, right? Or they'll be the most competitive to get, right? So I would say if you can look at the world and see it like a game, right? The way that you would break it down into variables and conditions, that's, you can look at any system in the world and you can turn it into gameplay if you apply that lens to it. The advice I would give you is that a lot of developers that I interact with in a variety of spaces often are making things, but they don't actually go into the first person and stand in what they made and look around because they're looking at it from a, a design perspective. You have to like go in and change your perspective and stand in it and just take in the breath of what you've made. And then usually it will tell you what the next steps are. I'm almost willing to bet my bottom dollar. And so I would say, go stand in your work. Meaning, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, next question online. What are networking strategies for introverts in the tech industry? Make some friends. Um, you're, uh, find an extrovert to attach to. Um, Push yourself to the networking events. Go. <laughs> like, even if you stand yes. there, somebody is going to come talk to you. Yes, exactly. 80% of success is showing up. Um, yeah. Be there and be yourself, of course. I guarantee you, you're not the only person that's feeling that way. Um, it takes a lot to put yourself out there and um, you know, a, a little bit of courage goes a really long way in those situations. And good networking is just friend making. And um, keep doing it more often because the more you do it, um, yeah. like meet people. Yeah. Talk to people. Like, that's just all you have to do, and things will unfold. Just have a conversation. It's that easy. And don't be so judgy of yourself. Be weird and live in it. Thank you. Weird is cool. Last question. Uh, hi, I'm Jacob Cairo, and I'm in the game design program. Uh, for one, I'm happy to see a Hoosier repping in the staff. <laughs> um, and my question is a little long winded. I would try to keep it short. Um, but with the rapidly changing industry we have, uh, honestly, kind of going back to the uh, over expansion during COVID and then the rapid course correction we've had in this past year and a half. Okay. Um, as someone who values DEI initiatives, how can I 
make myself stand out while also being an ally to uh, those initiatives, getting those other perspectives. Love that. You just did it. You, yeah, exactly. You hit it right there. Um, you are uh, putting yourself out there, showing up. Uh, you're going to be making friends. Um, and then, of course, true valued friendship turns into networking, right? Yes. Um, and, and not with, you know, a face, not, not with a mask. It's a, if truly valuing those friendships that are not people, people that are not like you. Um, it goes a long way. And you can show up. There are a lot of organizations that support uh, underrepresented groups in and outside of technology. And you can always show up and support those organizations. Um, you know, I think being an ally is uh, a critical role because your ability to operate in spaces that maybe underrepresented people don't have the opportunity to operate in, that means that you get to be the voice until you open the door and you get those people in there with you. Uh, so I think you're, you're playing a critical role in being an ally and being vocal about it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, so much I'm, to talk about. <laughs> I know, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop the questions here. Um, well, thank you, ladies, for coming today uh, and sharing your expertise, share, sharing advice uh, with our students. Guys, I hope to see you both on Thursday and Friday. I mean, I want to see all of you. I'm like, I, I already recognizing your faces, so I'm just going to keep track of who's showing up. Um, so, um, again, the Central Florida uh, Immersive Tech Summit. That's this Thursday and Friday, uh, 10 to 5 on Thursday, 11 to 4 on Friday. So Friday is the Tech Expo and the Career Fair. And then the panels. We have a bunch of panels on that Thursday. So please check the website uh, and just come attend. Uh, I mean, all the instructors know that they are supposed to give you the opportunity to come on Thursday. So nobody's going to tell you no. You just go to your instructor and tell them that uh, you're interested in going. Um, for those final project, I want to see you at the career fair. So that's. <laughs> And please uh, register. Go to Full Cell uh, to the F Full Cell website, and under events you will find the link uh, to the summit. Uh, for those of you also here today, uh, you can get GPS points because you showed up. Uh, just scan the QR code to take the survey, and you will get your GPS points. There also might be somebody that you know that's interested in the space, and they just haven't had the experience or exposure. So maybe bring somebody yes. that you could inspire. Uh, as a, a buddy system to the event, and maybe they'll be inspired to start making uh, way into the, the immersive tech industry. Great point, Ariane. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really, really, really enjoyed today's session. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. My name is Dr. Haifa Mamar from Full Sail University. Have a great evening. Thank you. <laughs>